In this video, we are going to, now that we have looked at the PI files and we've looked at packages and projects, we are going to create this structure and look at how specifically your packages and projects fit together into the larger scheme and how you should be using packages to represent your work, com.company and, and so on. Now, if you look at this book, the Headfirst Java book from 2005, and you go to page 620, you will see that, as we talked about, when you're writing Java code, you need to put that code into packages. It's just a way to organize lots and lots of, you know, potentially thousands or hundreds of thousands of classes of files. How do you organize them? You use packages. And notice what it says here. You didn't put your own classes into packages and in the real world that's really bad in other words you need to if you're writing java do this com dot company and then something if you have another package remember this is the prefix for what's called the namespace and then of course your classes would go here class something so the first thing we're going to do here is create a new workspace so i'm going to switch workspace i'm going to go to other and I'm going to type in a new workspace so we can um, sort of... A workspace, by the way, is just a way of managing what it is you're seeing on the screen. So I'm going to call this workspace test. And you'll see that IIB will essentially close. This is an Eclipse thing, actually, so it's really Eclipse that's closing. And it will relaunch. And here, I'm going to close this welcome screen. And you'll immediately see that I have my integration node. This came with the the VM, or essentially the what's on the VM. It came with the installation of ICFM, IBM Counter Fraud Management. But we need to add our remote node, so I'm going to do that now. And again, that's just right-click on the integration node and go to a, connect to a remote integration node. Fill in these values. And these are my values here, and I'll click on Finish. But before I do that, if you're not sure of the name of your integration node, all you have to do is load the or open the core server switch users and open up the uh, the properties of that profile as MQ broker and then do this dot prefix this uh, dot notation to load the environment variables from this and then do an MQ SI list and you will see that the integration node is called CFQM and I will click on finish and then now we can see our our integration server and all of our deployed applications and notice this my lib down here we're going to come back to that in a little while but when you deploy applications you don't simply uh, deploy an application in, oftentimes you will not just deploy the application but it's accompanying libraries and we're going to talk about that later but for now let's look at the structure so first let's do uh, let's let's develop a new application so we're going to click on application we're gonna, I'm going to call it my app and then in here we're going to create a new message flow and I'm going to call it my flow and notice we said use default broker scheme that is something you should not do so let's fix that I'm going to right click on my message broker and I'm going to delete this so that will get rid of the flow and the reason why you don't want to do that and it is not only because it tells you in other areas of the program but because you need to use this schema here needs to be essentially a copy of the namespace. So let's do company.com. So that's dot, that's company dot sorry that's com dot company, and then finish. And notice what that did too. So we essentially we have now our flow, and then in the actual dot message flow file is inside a namespace. Now if you right click on that namespace, notice you can't you don't see properties that's because this is a logical representation of of this container this is called a container <laughs> how do you know that it's called a container well if you were to go to new and then message flow and it says container here and I hit new these are the different types of containers that you can have and if you go to this web page you will see if you scroll down how do I create an integration project? It'll tell you an integration project is a specialized container in which you create and maintain all the resources associated with one or more message flows. You can group together related message flows and resources in a single integration project to provide an organizational structure to message flow to your message flow resources. So you're already familiar with applications. You're already familiar, well, sort of familiar with libraries. And then we have this separate integration project. If I click on that integration project, then I just say, you know, my 
my um, project, or let's say IP for integration project, and I hit enter, notice what happens. It goes under, under independent resources. And if I cancel this and click on new, uh, look at all these same options I got previously when I didn't create the independent resource. So I can create message flows, subflows, eSQL files, and so on. So I'm going to delete this because we don't really need it for now. But you get the idea. This is Notice that all three of those things, so an app, so if I kind of, in fact, let me, sh let me just show you this. This will be very um, explicit here. If I were to go to a message flow, I'm not actually going to create a message flow. I just want to create a library now so you can see what this actually looks like, my lib. And then I hit um, finish. Then you will see a new my lib. And the reason that, application, library, and integration project are separated like this as containers is because that's exactly what they are. Each of these will contain some thing, and then the things that they contain just completely depend on what you're trying to do.